guys, how's it going today? Just, uh, headed back into Cincinnati and thought I would finally get a chance to post um, the video everybody's been asking me to do <coughs> on uh, parking down here. Kind of weird. It's like 12 noon. I wonder what the holdup is on the highway here. Um, did a video on Friday, which I have not yet uploaded to uh, YouTube. Uh, had the intention of doing this parking video on that day, but by the time I got to uh, Cincinnati, it was already dark, and I actually did record it, but you couldn't see shit. So. There was no point. Ah, oh, come on, people. This is the problem. That people don't know how to merge. Oh, that was brilliant. been a long ass day today. I'm on duty at 1.45 this morning. Rolling by two. Um, took a load up to Defiance. Unloaded a plant one. I got done with that and they're like, well, we got a partial plant one, we need you to unload two. So I unloaded that, and then they asked me to do a plant, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, it was a partial plant one. So I took up a plant one, unloaded that, then I unloaded a partial plant one that was already sitting up there. And then after that I unloaded a, a, a fully loaded plant two that was already sitting up there. So, it's been a busy day. I mean, it's good. I'd rather drive up and back once and do two loads or three, two and a half loads. So, no real complaints there. Subaru STI. My friend's got one of those. But his is a wagon version. Test drove a uh, 03 Grand Cherokee last night. I posted the video to that last night. Ended up uh, being kind of a disappointment. Uh, it was nice. It was a 03, like 140,000 on it, I think. Uh, had 4 liter 6 cylinder, quadra drive, limited model, totally loaded, black with, with metal flake in it. And uh, it was really sharp looking. Drove okay. But the uh, blending doors did not work. And when you turn, so when you turn it from, you know, face to foot to defroster, nothing happens. And it's a fairly expensive repair to have done, or it's a lot of work to do yourself. Um, the air didn't seem to come on and off. Missing the spare tire. Power steering pump made a little bit of a whining noise, but it could have just been a little low. And um, you 
can tell the dash had been already taken out once because there were scuffs on the A pillar here and on the other side too. And there was a wire, there was a big cable bundle hanging down. Look at this jackass. And yeah, let's go. Uh, big cable bundle hanging down on the passenger side that should not have been hanging down. So I don't know whether somebody pulled the dash and then couldn't fix it, didn't fix it, or whether this is the second time they've broken. <laughs> um, well, then the big problem was when I got back to the dealer, I my usual thing is to let it idle and I crawl under it, look around for leaks, you know, evidence of leaking, and um, walked around it and checked a few things and got back in the got back in the Jeep and the temperature gauge was sitting on over 260 degrees, pegged the needle. Um, I was blocked in at the dealer at that point, I couldn't go anywhere or I would have hopped back in it and taken it out for a short drive uh, to try to cool it off rather than just shut it off, but I couldn't couldn't go anywhere so I had to shut her down and told him about it and what I noticed was the cooling fan wasn't coming on so it may just be that simple bad wire bad connector bad sensor not turning the cooling fan on uh, that'll make it overheat pretty quick funny thing is throughout my test drive which you still see you can watch the video if you want it sat in idle for quite a while and there are several points where you can view the, see the temperature gauge and at no point did it overheat at all while I took it out for the test drive including as I was walking around it showing under the hood I mean it sat in idle for quite a while and never overheated so I'm betting it's an electrical um, an electrical problem a, uh, a, a broken wire or something because you know it didn't overheat before and then it does so something come on look get I'm going 45 freaking miles an hour. <clears throat> and you need to go. So I was somewhat disappointed. They wanted 9000 for it, which was too much. I mean, the blending doors could cost up to $2,000 to have repaired. Um, you know, so I just, you know, and if the thing overheated on me, how many other people has it overheated on? Now, I mean, the 4 liter 6 cylinder is an iron block iron head, so it's not, you know, terribly susceptible to overheating problems, but the you know, Spidey sense is going off that, uh, you know, maybe I ought to pass on this one. Um, so I went to another dealer that I'd been to previously, and he had four WJs on the lot, and one Cherokee, and a, he actually had a, 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 a ZJ also. Um, and he had one. He had an 04, six-cylinder, select track, cloth. It was a Laredo, I think. Um, absolutely clean as a whistle under the hood I mean it, it didn't look like it had been pressure washed you can kind of tell that but it just looked like it was really clean you know I mean inside and out he wanted seven for that one had 140 on it I think um, he had a 2000 it was also a Laredo uh, it was a Laredo 4 liter select track had leather, upgraded stereo, automatic headlights, um, yeah, had 160 on it, I think. He wanted five for that one. In fact, he offered five, offered seven on the other one. And that was an 01. That one was filthy. Um, dirty on the outside, dirty on the inside, and he admitted he'd let his daughter drive it for the last couple of months, and she left it that way. So. I mean, I guess it's, that might be good. I don't know if his daughter was driving it the last couple of months, but maybe that says something. 
had brand new tires on it. Uh, he, he put some new tires and they were nice. They were slightly oversized and they were a little bit more of an all-terrain off-road tire, which is something I would like to have on my Jeep. So it had some advantages, but um, it was filthy. And nothing, nothing a $20 detail job wouldn't cover, but um, so I don't know. I, I haven't, haven't found one that, like, speaks to me. Like, you know, take me home now. You know, you, you just kind of get that feeling when you find the right car that, that's the one that needs to be in your driveway, you know. And I just I haven't found one yet that just really speaks to me. Um, oh. I'd really like to have a V8, 4.7 liter V8, but... Um, I don't know. I don't know. the guys there was some on the radio today they were talking about uh, the weather out in Alaska someplace in Alaska had 15 feet of snow <laughs> called out the National Guard apparently to help dig people out can you imagine that 15 feet of snow that's ridiculous I you know what do you do with it where do you shovel it where do you where do you put it that's probably the problem is, uh, you know, what do you do with the snow? Plow? You can't plow it anywhere. Maybe you just dig tunnels and walk around in the tunnels, you know, I don't know. Boy, I've been grinding the gears today. I don't know what. I'm out of sync. Got the uh, got some scope rings and a scope to mount on the Mosin Nagant. So I ordered ordered the scope rings and it came and they're the wrong size. I thought I I must have just ordered them wrong. They were high mount because they need to be for the Mosin to clear the breach. I thought they were one inch diameter rings, but apparently they weren't. And um, they were just, they were like maybe an eighth of an inch too big around. And so, first I thought, well, let me see if I can jerry rig this and fill up the gap. So I wrapped the scope with uh, cardboard, taped it up, and then compressed it in there. And it seemed like it was mounted pretty securely. And then I realized I had remembered that I had some rubber, um, just a sheet of rubber about like that. And I cut it to the right shapes and, uh, remounted it now it's a lot more secure and it should be fine I mean I know the Mosin's going to recoil quite a bit but um I, I don't think the scope can go anywhere it's not proper but you know it, it, I don't think it's going to move so um I'll take it down to the range and sight it in all I, all I can do is sight it in at 25 yards but I mean that should be alright Backing up. You should not. 
not have done that. He should have just stayed on the road. A lot safer to just stay on the road than to have the corner of your trailer hanging out like that. And I gotta be very careful when I turn right here because there's traffic behind me and there's a lot of idiots that live around here that don't understand that I need to swing wide to make this turn and they'll cut in to my to your right. Guys, almost back home. Game plan looks like here. Turn on the diff lock. And I may try to put it right there. Boy, somebody was an idiot, and they parked. And I don't want to be a bigger idiot and hit it. Alright guys. So that's backing in. Alright guys, have a good one. See you in a bit.